Mike, April Fool's is coming up. What's going on in the brain when you discover that you've been fooled? Well, the brain is obviously surprised, and hopefully the surprise is a delightful one. Yes. But not a, it won't, won't always mm-hmm. be the case, right? But the brain is ma- continuously making predictions. The brain, your brain is very good at coming to conclusions about the meanings of things, the values of things. It wants to come to conclusions. It's really good at the, it has to make quick decisions. And your brain has been a little bit too quick in coming to the conclusion of which way things lie. And then overthrown in the surprise. And the surprise has resulted in the release of chemicals. The brain loves surprises. And that's why we find being fooled usually a delightful experience. And I guess also a memorable one. Absolutely, because another thing those chemicals do is they burn in. They help us re- re- save that, that special event for long in, into the future. So it seems like this is a universal experience, um, being fooled. Well, everybody loves being fooled uh, in, a, in a happy way. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh. <laughs> yeah, in fact, there's a long tradition of it. And uh, many places in the world, they find this moment. And, and surprisingly, April 1st is the big day around the world to celebrate uh, playing a trick on somebody. I, I know in uh, France, for example, um, it's a tradition to uh, tack a paper fish on, yep. your, on your back. Yeah, and, and in the old days, I don't think it was a paper fish. Um, <laughs> I don't know about that, but um, it, is, it is actually called uh, Poisson Avril. I so love that. In, in, in France, they celebrate April fish. And I understand in Scotland, they so enjoy um, a good prank that it's a, a two-day holiday, April 1st and 2nd. Well, isn't that wonderful? And while, <laughs> while in England and Germany, they're much more efficient. It, all pranks must be done by noon. I think I prefer that. Well, frankly, I, li- I like to pull a plank on someone almost any day. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the ways the brain is fooled? Well, we have lots of tricks to, to convince people that our, what we're saying is true. So the first thing is I'd like to tell you something, right? And but uh, has I might not believe you. Right, but, it, but I, I compound the evidence. What if I bring mom in on it? Oh, mom. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Mom's in on the prank. Yeah, and now you're hooked. You know, now you're pretty sure that's got to be true because mom is not known to lie very often. And, and what about uh, people who are known to mislead you all the time, uh, magicians? Well, well, somebody like a musician has a special class of tricks. They have a special uh, uh, armament. And w- one thing that they do that's so fabulous is that they control your attention moment by moment. And basically, your brain is sampling information to every little s- surprising event that it interprets to be important across time, and it's basically shut down in the intervening time. So you don't realize that, but your brain is actually sampling information moment by moment. As they misdirect you. And all kinds of things happen in those intervals. Uh-huh. But you don't realize they're happening, but because you're attending to this thing, you know, then now the elephant is walking across the room in the interval, and you don't see it. And uh, so it's easy to fool a- another human being, and that's one of our weaknesses. One of our weaknesses is that we're su- just susceptible to tomfoolery. Being fooled, then, is really about making a mistake. Right. Well, we make mistakes all the time, and we strongly believe we in things that aren't true. So people might think they witnessed uh, a crime or they witnessed a certain person involved in the crime. We know that that information is very unreliable. Well, I'll give you a simple example. I wrote an autobiography for my family, for my children and grandchildren, and in the autobiography, I told the stories of my childhood. I'm absolutely certain that thir- cer- things occurred in a certain way. And then my five siblings, my brothers and sisters, read it. And to my shock, they had a different reality. <laughs> their, belief, their beliefs were significantly different on a number of things in my childhood that I was sure I vividly remembered. So we're not just, we're capable of fooling ourselves to develop strong beliefs about things that just can't be true. I told them to write their own book. So it's a shame we can't just uh, confine our mistakes to one day a year and enjoy them as April Fool's pranks. It's really not foolish for you to say that.